after three days and almost losing my life. You can see it right there. It's under that. I'm protecting it. We don't want to bump it or open the wound back up. But after three hard days of labor, intensive work, out in the Texas sun, 100 degree weather, we have finally got the Mercedes parts car gutted and stripped and ready for the sandblasters. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Keep in mind, we're only going to use certain parts of this car, so we need crucial pieces to put the puzzle back together, and this is what it takes when you are restoring a type of a vehicle like we're working on. And to make sure that we get these parts off this car precise and perfect in mint condition that we need, We've got to have this car completely sandblasted. And when I say sandblasted, it has got to be cleaned to the bare metal. And the reason for that is, is because if you look right here, you can see that there's a, some type of an undercoating that is on the vehicle itself. But we have got to see every spot weld on this car with a clear state of mind and conscience so we can remove the pieces we need to reuse them. We can't use a plasma cutter on removing these parts. So it's very, very important that when they sandblast this, they do it in a way that removes all the glue and all of everything that you're looking at. This is a spot weld, but when it's underneath this tar, like you can see right here, we can't figure out where we're going to drill the spot weld off. So that's the situation, and that's why it had to be completely gutted out and stripped down. So nitpick Norm's on his way over here, and I'm getting ready to go load the trailer up, and then he's going to come over here with this Bobcat, load the car on the trailer, and then we'll get it over to the sandblasters. Once it's at the sandblasters, we'll go ahead and let them have it for a week. And while we're waiting, we'll make sure to get on Polak Les's ass to get all this shit out of here because he's got exactly 24 hours to clean my fucking parking lot up. And if he doesn't have this shit out of here in 24 hours, then I will load it up on my fucking trailer and take it to the scrap iron yard. This is not a storage unit. This is not a storage lot. This is the front of my f***ing shop here. I'm the one working on Sunday, not Pollock Less. Figure it out. So, let me get the car loaded up. We're going to wait for Nitpick to get here. And hopefully we'll get this thing loaded up first thing in the morning. I'll be taking it down to the sandblasters and get her done. Now, before we go, we're going to take a look at these fenders. And I don't even know if we mentioned this already, but these are European style fenders. So these were pretty rare to actually come across. And when I say European, it's got the European headlight, got the European fog lamp, 
and then of course the European bumper. Um, on the American style fenders it had a big hole right here um, where the bumper actually went through and it bolted on. So the European style fenders are the way that we're going to be going with this. Now I think uh, since this car was exported to America they had to put the side markers on it in Europe. They don't have to have those. So what we will do is we will eliminate these and we'll weld that up on all four corners. If you look over here you can see that that front fender has it also. And then on, on the car that we are going to restore, I'm sorry, that's this car's name, Nightmare. Um, it had marker lights in the back. Now, pay close attention to this quarter panel on this vehicle. You can see that here is our rear section and it comes around into the quarter panel. Now this was our marker light I was just showing you. Look at the two holes on the bottom. And then on the European model four door, you don't see those two holes that come around on the back here because this bumper doesn't go all the way down the quarter panel. It stops right here in this area here. And if you look real close in all of the pile of shit that we got going here, there's the European bumper. So there's really a lot of difference, there is a lot of difference, I might say, in the European um, Mercedes-Benz versus the American Mercedes-Benz. And here we go right here, here is our American Fender, you can see the difference, see where the big hole is right there for the uh, American bumper that would bolt onto that. So there's a lot of difference in the European style Mercedes versus the American Mercedes because America required a lot more um, DOT certifications to have vehicles in America versus Europe got away with a lot of stuff that they didn't have to have and I believe that's because America is the leader on automobile uh, quantity you might say that means that our country has more automobiles in it than any other country in the, the world and to keep population uh, pollution down and DOT regulations, they set forth a lot more rules on having a car on the road in America than uh, Europe does. So, there you go. There you go, easy. Easy does it. Watch the rockers. Let's go. Back her off. Just let me operate the Bobcat. Because, Norm, all your yelling how many cars screaming. have you messed up over here? None. How many? None. That's bullshit. None. I got a GTO sitting in there that says different. Nah, bullshit. Okay, where's the bumper on the GTO? At the scrap iron yard, Norm. Yeah, why? It's at the scrap why, iron yard. Because you, you hooked on to it with that thing and bent it and twisted it and fucked it up, Norm. you didn't listen to how I said I got it loaded. Thank you, Norm. Because you wouldn't listen. Thank you, nitpick Norm. <laughs> Next time Pete's operating that this thing, good. and we're going to see what happens. That sounds good. I'd appreciate that. Big Pete Norman is Bobcat. Big boy toy. And a little guy driving it. There you go, Norm. Hit the road. What we got is a front clip. 
we need this front clip. This front clip is crucial to restoring our nightmare Mercedes-Benz car. Now, I had to get this sandblast. I'm gonna go ahead and explain this sandblast shit. Uh, they charged me 1,600, what was it? 1620. 1,620 fucking dollars to sandblast what you see on here. Now what we got is the complete front end because we're gonna need to take this off. And the reason I had them do it this specific, if many could bring that over here, I have got to see every single one of these individual welds on here. And if you look right here, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's ten spot welds right there. I have got to be able to see all these spot welds that I need to remove. Now on the car that we are restoring, I use my plasma cutter because we don't give a shit about that part. We're throwing it in the trash. Am I right, Minnie? I assume so. But when it comes to the part that you need to keep, I will have to individually drill out each one of these little spot welds and precisely take them off. Now, Mercedes is very famous for putting undercoating on their cars. Too bad the undercoating isn't as good as some American cars and it didn't rust out. So obviously their undercoating technology is about this good okay that's about how good it is all right because just like nightmare and we're gonna call the car nightmare that's its name just like nightmare this car's rotted and rusted on the bottom too but the good thing about it is the parts that we need are not rotted so the firewall's good um the front end's good can you bring the camera over here kind of you know get it up in here i want to show everybody this real quick well, I'm not leaning. It's hotter than hell here, please. I'm not leaning on it. Okay, you know, let me have right. the camera. Thank you. If we look up in the floor, you can see floor braces, and we need those floor braces. You can see these are in excellent shape. And you can see how precise they had to sandblast that to get that to bare metal so we can see all the spot welds that we need. So, uh, we don't care about the front end. We don't care about that. But what we do care about, um, yeah, suspension. We care about the front clip, all right? Uh, we're not even going to look at the car. You're going to have to follow the videos on this and actually see what's going on with it. But uh, I'm just going to let everybody know. This is one of the most diabolical, um, horrible, uh, frantically uh, pathetic restorations that I have ever done over here. And I'm not liking it. I'm really not liking it many. Okay, I'm not liking it. You don't like anything, so what? Thank you for your opinion. It's a fact. The uh, wheel well looks really nice. We'll be able to spot weld those out. Um, we needed a couple of these can tops. This ain't going to work. We can go ahead and use that piece up there. It looks nice and factory original. We can weld those holes in. But you get the idea here, okay? You get the idea of what it's really, really like restoring fucking cars. And getting her done. If you want to use uh, steel wool and Bondo to fix your rust hole, then do it! Do it! I'm going to say it again. Do it! Do it! Because that's the way you think it should be done. Over here at SWRNC, we have a different aspect. What the hell is this? We got rust in a piece that we need to replace. Um, that's not that bad. I can fix that. All right. There is one piece down here, which is this piece right here. I don't know if you can see that, where my hand is. Uh, this is rotted out in the same exact place, so we're going to have to deal with that as well. But I better let you go. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, over here at SWRNC Dallas. Hotter than hell. Uh, the sun's out bright today. It's about 127 degrees. I'm driving a black fucking truck, and there's nothing else I can say to make the heat worse. I bet you're glad to be under the shade of the shop, aren't you? Let's just get to work. I'll just please. ask. What are you working on? Whatever you fucking tell me, Pete. Well, I think so we far, need... I'm just standing here with my finger up my ass doing nothing. I don't want to hear about that. I think that uh, we need to go to the Lowe's and give Nick Burn. This is going to take some extreme sweeping over here to get it cleaned up. Well, by the time you get through the fucking brand and I'll be done. What? Who? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? 
I'm just showing people the restoration job, that's all. That's all I'm doing. You know? I'm sorry what it really takes yeah, well, to restore. No, what you're doing is you're working yourself. No, up. I'm not working nothing up. I gotta go. I gotta go. So that you can bitch and cuss okay. me out for the can next I go? fucking hour. Nobody's gonna be hollering and screaming, oh, okay? Yeah, no one's hollering and screaming. Let's go ahead and get it cleaned up. I'm sorry, did you say something about pie? Did you say pie? What are you talking about? You want to go get a piece of pie? Oh, it's not a piece of pie over here. Minnie's going to bake a pie. My friend Pete. Yeah, with no oven, no kitchen. Sure, sure I will. It's only a piece of pie, okay? It's easy. Easy pickings. Minnie the Body Shop. Gotta love Minnie the Body Shop. on our 1976 Mercedes um, we're calling this the nightmare now I want to show you this is actually a piece of the firewall that we cut out uh, you can see where it was rotted and rusted down in the floor section actually you don't even know what you're looking at you're just looking at a piece of metal but this is actually where the floor would meet up with the firewall and then this piece right here is actually the corner of the rocker panel and let me show you what we're talking about. So if you look at this piece right here, that's the piece I just showed you that was completely rotted out. And you can see this one here has already started to rot, which we will be fixing. I actually got uh, a parts car that we completely stripped down. And if you look right there, those are the parts that we got off it along with this piece right here, which is the firewall that you're looking at. So anyway, back to the car in question or the car that we're talking about. You can see that uh, I have already removed the rocker panel. The rocker panel has already been removed. <clears throat> we got the floor on the uh, driver's side completely removed. Here's our rocker panel that goes on this side. And then this is our frame structure. This is a unibody frame car. Um, that frame structure is rotted out. And if you look over there, that piece that I'm pointing at, that is actually the underneath of the floor with all the frame structure that we're going to need to replace all this rotted shit. So this is a big job. And um, if you are faint of heart and you don't know how to do this type of work, I suggest not to try. Because you will take your dream car that you want restored and basically make it into a junk pile piece of shit. Basically like this thing is. Uh, but worse and end up trashing the car. So anyway, um, we're out here working on this. You can see where I've already marked off where I got to cut this section out. And this is where our floor lines up. What you're seeing down here is actually the floor. And there's a spot weld right there. So once I remove these spot welds, this piece will come off. And then we'll have a nice clean edge right here that we'll be able to mount our floor back on. Now, I just cut this rust out right here on this rocker panel corner and you can see where it goes right here uh, we're going to be welding that on there and then removing this part of the floor which is over here in this area which actually mounts to the rocker panel corner very very confusing and very very can we say jigsaw puzzle action going on now on a job like this you don't want to throw anything away i don't care if you're looking at the pile of trash that we removed this is the floor that we removed and the rocker panel, this is all that's left. But you don't want to throw any of that away because there might be intricate little pieces that you might need to use to um, actually restore a car of this magnitude. And then also, if you look up here on my workbench, you can see that I even kept, here's the left brace. This is part of that floor brace I was telling you about. And I kept that just in case just in case we did not find a parts car that we needed. These are little intricate pieces here that we kept for some oddball reason, um, possibly because of this bracket right here that I'm going to have to put back on the floor. And then other little pieces like this, uh, I don't even know what that would be. Uh, but one good thing about restoring a car like this 
is that you got a mirror image from left to right and you'll be able to copycat everything that you need. For instance, this piece right here is actually that piece right there that goes right here. Confusing? Yes, it is. But it's very, very knowledgeable to know what's going on. I just got done repairing this corner of the firewall and let me explain before we go any further if you look over here this is a pile of parts that we're going to be using on this car and these parts came from a parts car we literally had to go out and buy a parts car for this car just so we can gut it out strip it down for sheet metal parts that we are going to need uh, this little section right here, this little corner took two days and the reason it took two days is because there's a lot of intricate stuff on there that needed repaired. First of all we had to uh, cut this section out that was rotted out. We went ahead and removed the section off of the parts car firewall. We grafted it back into the car and then if you look right here in this corner you can see it's got this tab. That's actually a rocker panel cover. That is not made onto the rocker panel itself. That is a separate little cover that is made onto it. So we had to have that piece because the one that was originally on the car, and if we dig deep down into our trash can, you're going to see this is the piece that we took off, and it's basically non-restorable as far as corners go, pieces, and firewalls itself. So I went ahead and finished up on all the metal fabrication inside the car where the floor goes. And if you look real close right here, this was rotted out where the floor goes on. And I had to make that. And then if we come over here, there's a piece right in this area here that we had to make somewhere down there. But we finally got all that done last night uh, around 8 o'clock. And now we're ready to go ahead and start grafting the floor. Now I want everybody to know this is a unibody car. You can see where I cut the floor out and I'm going to tell you why I did this. There's actually braces that run across that uh, that transmission hump in this section right here and then over here in this area. And those are reinforcement braces for the car because this is unibody so it's got a lot of structure, hidden structure in the car. Um, you can basically see part of that structure right there that we're talking about. But to replace a floor like this, you can do it either two ways. You can go ahead and completely take the whole floor out of the car, or you can cut the bad sections out like I'm doing and replace only what needs to be replaced. The floor on this car goes all the way up to this section right here. And then it comes around here and then goes around on the side here on the inner quarter panel and then it rides all the way along and if you look right there you can see where that floor is rotted out that's part of the floor which we would call the inner uh, rocker panel that's actually the floor section of this car and I'm going to show you that so this actually has two floor tubs these are called tubs these are not called floor pans the reason they're called tubs is because it's got the back section connected to it and it's also got the inner rockers and then of course the transmission tunnel is part of the floor itself so these are called floor tubs not floor pans so if we look right here this is our tub this is a floor tub this is actually the driver's side of the vehicle and here's that inner rocker panel I told you was part of the floor and then if we look right here here's that back section that actually rides up into the trunk so when you're working on a car such as this one and it's a unibody they're called tubs not uh, pans but what we got to do is we got to trim this floor down to fit inside that car and what we'll do is we will take our masking tape our um, three-quarter inch masking tape and we'll tape it off in where we're going to cut this thing off and then once we get it cut off, I will go ahead and set this inside the car and then I will get under the car and I will trace the edges around the floor 
where I need to trim it off. Now, this is going to be a type of a weld that's going to stiffen the floor because we're not replacing the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap the metal. You can see my hand there. I'm going to overlap the floor tub with the original tub and then I will weld it on the inside completely solid and then once I get all the rocker panels and all the tubs installed in the car and all of the sheet metal done as you're looking at the car now we will go ahead and put the car on a rotisserie machine and then that way we'll be able to flip the car over we'll be able to trim the bottom of the floor or should I say tub where it needs to be trimmed and then we will weld that up all the way around it's a big job it, it's an extensive job and I'm going to say it one more time if you haven't watched my videos in the past if you do not know how to do this type of work and it scares you to do this magnitude of rust repair you're better off walking away and letting a professional do it because just little intricate pieces like I've already showed you will make your mind boggle and if you don't know how to make this stuff or how to put it in or where I should start the best thing to do is find a professional shop like mine that you can trust I'm not advertising for my shop I don't need any business today but you need to find someone that's honest that has integrity that has a uh, uh, a following you might say and somebody that is reasonably on on dealing with this type of stuff but I will say one other thing this type of job takes a long time to do don't expect to do a job like this in a couple days and you're done let's go ahead and trim this floor out and then once it's trimmed we'll set it in there and see where we're at so we'll go ahead and get a good look at this and what we're looking at is we can see how the floor comes down and then it starts to roll but what I'm looking at is I'm looking at marker points where I can cut it off and one of them is this hump right here I can see that this bulge right here is still in the car and then I got approximately an inch inch and a half of play going down another thing that I see is this piece right here is actually protruding out from the original floor and if I cut it too far in, what's going to happen, the floor won't even fall in, uh, or I'll have to take this out, which we don't want to take that brace out, because that brace actually goes all the way through to the car itself. And you can see there's a, a bolt where it's bolted down and spot welded as well. So I'm kind of looking at that, and I see that if I cut it right where the hump starts, right in this area here, I think I'm going to be okay, and we'll be all right where the floor will sit in there. Then I'll come across here, and we're going to go ahead and visually draw a straight line across that. And then we get over here to this area where the shifter is. So we're going to come down approximately three inches on that, two and a half inches. But I'm going to cut it up here, right where that curve starts. That way I know I have enough meat that's going to go all the way across. Now, look at this hole right here. We might come down here, come around that hole and then bring it all the way across and bam we're done but one more thing we want to look at is this hole right here so we're going to go ahead and cut our floor through that hole that's going to give us a lineup point where the floor will go once we line this hole up with our other floor and we'll know that the floor is in a proper position so I'm going to go ahead and take my tape and I'm going to find my line that I want and we're going to go straight across right here just like this And we know that that's going to actually be enough. And then we'll just come straight across. We're going to cut this whole back section off just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and cut this out as well. And then we're going to go ahead. Remember I told you I was going to come down here. So I'm going to take a piece of tape. And I'm going to come down here just like this. And then... I will come up here, kind of bring it around, and then remember that shadow line I was telling you about? Let's go ahead and see if we can try to halfway follow that. 
but then that'll be where our cut line is for our floor pan. Or should I say, floor tub. So this is actually a good video in showing you just because you buy the whole panel, all right, inside or out, doesn't mean that you have to use the whole panel. I mean, it's common sense that why would I have to replace the whole thing and go through all that hassle and all that trouble when I really don't have to? getting rid of all the meat that we don't want. We're kind of like trimming the turkey here, you might call it. Um, you know, getting rid of all the, the stuff that nobody's going to eat and nobody's going to enjoy. That's basically what we just did. We just trimmed the turkey and now it's time to go gobble, gobble, gobble and put it in the oven and start baking everything together so it'll all work out. If I can get this tape off. All right, let's go ahead and put this in the car and let's see what happens once we set it in. I think we're gonna have a little bit of problem back in this area right here due to the fact that on this section here, I left some of it there and we're gonna have to trim that. But this is where we really start figuring out what's gonna happen. So I'm just test fitting this, I'm not, this is not a permanent fit. All we're doing is getting this in here so we can see what we got to do to finish it out. And if you notice, I'm lifting the floor pan all the way up. And I can't clear this right here. There we go. Okay. So, the first thing we notice is that we got this section of the floor that's actually longer. And we're going to have to trim that off. So what I'll do on that piece of floor there, and you can see if uh, the girl camera, girl person, can bring it over. There's a hole right here. Do you see that hole? Can you see that? Yep. And then there's also a hole right there. So that's telling me that I need to measure from this hole out to here, and then I need to trim this section off of the floor pan. And I think once I do that, then we should be able to slide this up in there. So let's get that trimmed and see what happens. Okay, what I found out is from this hole right here, we got to go three inches over. So, and I'm going to show you a situation we got. So we're going to go approximately two and three quarters over. And what we really have to remove is this section right here. Now before we put this floor in here, we also got some other modifications we got to do before the floor will go in. Let's go look at that. So if we look in this area right here, of course this is our floor and you can see it's rotted out behind it. Um, this is actually a seat belt bracket. The reason I know that is because the seat belt actually sits on this plate and then there's a little hook that hooks in there to hold it in place and then you bolt it in. I have got to remove this bracket and when I measured three inches from the hole, three inches came to approximately this area right here so that's why I went two and three quarters. Now if you look right here, these spot welds that I cut out, that's actually where um, this piece right here welds to and we're going to show you that when we get to that point. But I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and then I will uh, find a marker point, or actually I can go ahead and use that side, because what, what I'm trying to tell you here 
is this is a mirror image situation. That's why you only do one floor at a time. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. That way, what we're doing is we're doing all this tub. I'll be able to put this thing back in here, weld this on by measuring everything out over there. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to... Rough cut this top plate off. Just like that. And then I'll go ahead and remove that brace and then we'll slide the floor back in there. All right, since we know that we have to take this whole section out, what I'll do is I'll just uh, cut the floor out where it's rotted at the same time. that off of there and we'll put this right there and then now you can see what we're looking at here as far as floor go okay let's go ahead and stick it in there now and see what we end up with Okay, now that we actually have the floor tub in the car, it's not fit perfect yet. Um, I'm going to bring my plasma cutter over here. I'm going to turn this edge off right here. Let me get that done. Get that out of there. And now, we're going to figure out where we're going with it. And look what we got. Bring the camera over here, please. Looks like a perfect fit. If we look in this area here, you can see how the floor is binding up. See that, Minnie? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what we got to do can you take a pie is out we're going to have to relieve that so it will overlap. And I was showing them a lineup point. If you come over here, kind of get the camera right where I'm at. You can see right here where my finger is, and I can feel there's still about a half an inch that I have to go down with it. I still got to go about a half an inch down, and then that will line up. And then you can see how tight I cut that. Of course, I got to trim that still right here. And then another lineup point that we might look at is as many brings the camera over here. This is where our this uh, tab. And you can't see it, but that tab is actually where this piece of the tub actually bolts to, and I can feel that it's way up high. So yeah, we got to go down. You kind of get the idea of what's going on here. One other reason it's fitting in here really tight is because I really overcut it big time up here, and it's binding the floor from actually falling down in there. Um, what I'll do now is I will just take my time and I will trim the floor where I need to trim it. I'm gonna get up under the car. I'll scribe all the way around the floor back here because we see that this is a nice snug fit. And then once this is trimmed out where it should be, then that'll make our front fall in where it should go. Because when you have this much of it laying over the top of this metal, it's actually pushing this forward. So we have got to uh, cut this down to where it was cut down here. And then once we do that, um, and then of course over in this corner here, I mean the floor is way down here, you know what I'm saying? The floor, the original floor is way down here, so when it's hanging over, and look at this brace right here, you see that? And I don't want to take that off. So let me get the floor trimmed. Uh, you're getting the idea of what's going on here, you're learning, and you're telling yourself, man, my friend Pete makes it look really easy. It is easy, if you want it to be easy. Because you're the only one that can get off your lazy ass. You're the only one that can use your brain. You're the only one 
that can quit feeling sorry for your fucking self, whining and crying. I hate to disappoint everybody out there, but everybody in the world has problems. Everybody has situations, whether your situations or problems are worse than my situations. To me, my problems and situations are bad. To many, her problems are bad. You should make the best of it and do what you want to do in life before you actually die. We'll be back as I sweat my ass off and figure out how this floor tub goes in this Mercedes. Looking pretty good, really. Don't you think? Looking good. Okay. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.